All right, beginners, let's look at OneNote. Hi everyone, welcome to Talk and Chalk. I'm Beck, and today I'm going to take you guys through OneNote programming for teachers, beginners edition. This is going to be if you've never used it before, you've got no idea what's going on, but you've heard a lot about it, good things I'm sure, and I'm gonna show you just how you can sort of get started in it today. So if you've already been using OneNote and you feel a pretty, uh, you know, a little bit confident with it, this probably isn't for you. Welcome to watch anyway though and see if there's anything that you haven't tried yet. So I'm gonna be filming on my phone because I wanna use my Surface Pro here to show you what I've got and it might be a little bit wobbly, but yeah, let's get to it. All right, guys, let's have a look. So I've got my OneNote icon set up here. I didn't even know what I looked at last, so it's probably gonna open up to my normal thing. I'm gonna to go to a section that I haven't used before, which is my personal one here. So this is what it should look like when you have a brand new one. There is nothing at the top, nothing on the side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the top here and I'm going to open a new tab so it says create new section and I can give it a name and I'm going to call that uh, I'm going to try and type while we do this class overview so I'm just going to call that one class overview and then imagine that this is like a folder so I've just created a whole folder here and then over here I can create segments. So picture your old paper copy of your program where you would have your big ring binder full of things and then you'd have your first section. This is like the first tab and then you can put different things in your plastic sleeves over here. So I'm going to go over this side and I've got my untitled page here. Now the title that's here is going to be the title that's uh, turns up over this side here so I'm just going to type in here um, and what did I say class overview so I'm going to put uh, list and I'm just going to click off that and then you'll see over here it's called list now let's pretend in this section here I put my kids names I just put their student names um, their birthday whatever and then what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to click on this plus button and it will start another untitled page and you'll see now it's blank because I'm in a new plastic sleeve so to speak so in this section here I'm going to be putting oops ah, so, oh my gosh oh my gosh I can't just leave I did that on video additional I didn't do that on purpose I swear oh it's late additional needs I'm just going to write additional needs there and then in here I might put different things with their additional needs okay so you get the idea of making a folder. So let's say now I want to get to, I don't know, my stage statement. So I'm going to call this one stage statements. So this is like a new file here in my, you know, ring binder folder. I'm really sorry for the wobbling of the photo. It's a bit hard of the camera. It's a bit hard to type and do this at the same time. But now you can see I've got stage statements and down here I've got my little plastic sleeves, so to speak. <laughs> And I'm going to start with English, English, and then here I'm going to put a copy of my stage statements for English. And then I'll go back here and then I'll click on this one. And then the next one can be mathematics. Whoops. I'm just typing in the wrong section there. I just inserted a text box by accident because I'm finding this a bit hard to do. Math, uh, I really need to get a, um, a tripod for my phone. Mathematics. So that's in there. Now what I can do, I'm just going to try and hold this still for you guys, is I might see if I can find one of my stage statements. So if I go up to the top here and I click on insert, I'm going to click file print out because it will make it, are you serious? Are you doing an update? Remind me later. Um, file print out because it's going to open it up. So I'm just going to go back to my old files. Um, where am I? Past USBs, 2007. And I'm going to see if I can find my stage statement. Oh, okay, I'm not going to find that. 
you know what let's do something else because that won't work let's go to a new tab let's pretend this is my new section and let's go with timetables because I know I've got a timetable saved timetable so this is gonna be my class timetable now I want my first little plastic sleeve to be term one so that's over here but we have four terms in a year so I'm gonna make my next one term two okay and to go back I just need to click on this one so term one I'm gonna click down here now you can create yourself a table you can do this in here not a problem but if you feel really really unsure and you are like me and you prefer just working in word for the moment you just go to file print out and again I'm just going to go back to an old folder past USBs 2007 and I'm going to go to Topaz which was my class last year so you got see I did everything in Word and PDF and everything like normal because it was new for me so here's my timetables here's my timetable for term one and it's going to insert it so you can see just give it a second as it updates it'll take a minute it's going to put it in there for me so now it's loading and there it is so you can see there's the actual file here so I can open it up from there if I want to and edit but here it is here now think of this kind of like a, a, a PDF I can't go in and edit these boxes I, I need to go and do that in the Word document itself however I can draw on here I can get my pen and draw on top of that and highlight that if I want to just because of the features of the Surface Pro but you can see it's in there and then I if I want to I can go to the term 2 tab over this side here term 2 I'm just gonna click down here I'm gonna do the exact same thing file print out now it's remembered where I was so I'm gonna go term 2 give it a minute to load in there and it'll pop up just in a second okay it's coming now so you can see the file is there and there it is right there okay and I can make that smaller if I want to so I can zoom out and I can click on it because it's like a picture now it's almost like a screenshot I can make that smaller so that when I go into this it's you can just see the overview of it like that so um, like really it's really 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 easy to use and then all I do is I go across the top here and usually I put term one term two term three term four and my other little things and I mean I'll show you my other one I'm just gonna click out of this um, where am I stage one that was me so here's what I had so I had PDP my PDP notes and when I say PDP notes um, you can look down here these were this is all the training and stuff that I did so there was all L3 staff development day and then there's if I scroll down there's more underneath there as you can see so you know this is what it looked like and then I had my class overview I had plan data so if I go into plan you know this was my analysis sheet and again I went to I'm just move off the kids names I went to plan data I saved it as a PDF and all I did was I did the same thing I went up to file printout and I inserted it the same way that I just did um, my timetable and I just highlighted on top of it none of it was printed out unless it absolutely had to be it was all here ready to go no paperwork everywhere and so you can see across the top there there's heaps of room for more tabs so you can't see it at the moment but there are more there's a little drop down there and there's the other tabs that I couldn't fit in so um, you know you can fit lots and lots of stuff in there so there's all my timetables there you go see all through there that's what I had term one term two term three there's my term four one. Oh, I must have put it in term four okay now you've got lots of features across the top there lots and lots of features that you can use but I mean don't let that overwhelm you little stickers you can get too um, I mean if I go back you have the option in here of just sharing so much with your team so this was a section that we all had if we go into collaboration we had um, you know our class split lists all shared in there like this can do bank so when our kids were away um, sorry not our kids when teachers were away and if we couldn't get a teacher to cover or whatever or if they were offered um, training and we had to split kids up we could just go straight into here and just quickly print off something from the can do must do bank 
simple stuff that we knew that they hadn't used in class that we could just randomly print out. It saved us so much running around in the morning. Um, you know, meeting notes. So we chucked in, you know, meeting notes that were in there if anyone needed to go back and get them. Um, and this was our team doing this. Our content library for the entire staff has all of our scope and sequences and everything in there ready to access. We've got the primary connections units in there ready to access and share, which means that, you know, it, it's, it just cuts down on all the paperwork, cuts down on the legwork. It's so much easier to use. I want to flip back. Okay, so like I said, this was a simple one for beginners. Really stickly, just think of it as a program where you can store all of that stuff that you've been typing and saving and, and putting together into one space that's easy to share. And it means that, like I said, you don't need to print anything. You don't need to have that big folder with all of the tabs and all the plastic sleeves and things going in and out. You can have it all right there digitally. And if you've got any capabilities, you know, in touch screen like I've got with the Surface Pro, you can just write on it for annotations, type on it for annotations. I've got the Surface Pro. It doesn't have to be the Surface Pro. If you've got an iPad, if you've got whatever, if you've got that in the classroom with you, I'm doing reading groups and I want to take notes on how kids are doing. I've got my OneNote open into my term one tab down into my guided reading little plastic sleeve section on the side there. I don't know which side it's on for this computer. Um, and I can type straight into it. I can put as many tabs as I want. I can type straight on there if I want to. I can write straight on there if I want to. Or I can open up a Word document. I can do it in a Word document, save it, and then insert the file into OneNote so it's saved. The great thing about this is your programming is ongoing the way that it should be. It's responsive the way that it should be. And if you want to give your supervisor access to it, you just link them to your program. Ours at my school is already linked all together already. So I can see, I could see my team's program at any time. We could share resources at any time. We'd be sitting there in a team and had someone go, oh yeah, I've got this resource. It's saved in that one. I can jump straight on and use it if I want to. Copy and paste it if I want to. I can copy and paste and save it into my own files if I want to, to save for later. It's so easy to use. So all I do at the moment is I've got my Google Drive to dump stuff into, resources into, but the things that I'm actively using in my program is in the OneNote program. I don't put my junky extra stuff that's in there. I don't put Department of Education policies and procedures and things in there. It's what pertains to my class specifically or my stage specifically in that program, the same way you would in the active working part of your program. You know, the old school one that you used to hand in once a term and then get feedback once a term. Now I get to give feedback ongoing. I can be responsive with my feedback and my team can seek it actively at the same time as well. And it's off oh, fresh off the top of your head and you get those ideas down straight away. Oh, I've got an idea for this lesson. Let's type it straight onto the OneNote and it's there ready to go. It's too easy. Now, there are tons and tons of great self-guided professional development that you can do on OneNote through Microsoft Education. You can go on to um, the, the community that's on there and there's heaps of professional learning and there's you can do pick and choose, pick your time. It says on there, you know, approximately how long it will take to do. Um, if you're pretty tech savvy, you might get through it faster. If you're not tech savvy, don't let that be a hindrance for you. This is your chance to get in and try something because once you get in and learn how to use it, it makes your life so much easier. Don't let that barrier of I'm not very good with technology stop you from realizing how great technology can make things for you. It can make it so much easier. Using OneNote has made things so much easier. I need to say right now, this is not a paid promotion. Um, I don't get anything from Microsoft or anything like that. Um, my school uses it because it's a great resource and I'm promoting it at the moment only because it's worked so well for me. It's made things so much easier in terms of programming and supervision. I highly recommend you give it a go it doesn't work for you, it doesn't work for you, but so far it's been a wonder for me and my team and my whole school. We're using it again, so it must be pretty good if we've got a whole school using it again. But if you've got any other questions that I didn't sort of cover here, um, if you're keen to hear more about how we've been using it, feel free to drop it in the comments below. Send me a message on Twitter or Facebook. All of my links and everything are in the description below. Um, I'm going to put my link down here. So if you haven't subscribed, you just hover over that, click the button to subscribe. I'll put one of my other back to school videos at the top here and uh, counting down to school now. We're nearly there, guys. So I'd love to hear any other suggestions in the comments below. Thanks. Bye.